I, I still get images of like things that happen, like boom, like throughout my day. I just like picture him, my brother, with his head like stuck in my pants. Like, you know, it's like, I can't, I need, I know I need to do therapy. <laughs> Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach us to reach out to us. Uh, our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and this is our season finale. Uh, another season in the books, which is crazy to think about. Uh, we, if you don't know and you're not familiar, we take six weeks off between seasons. So don't worry, the show's coming back. We're going to disappear for a little while just while we kind of get all new episodes in place. Um, but thanks again for, you know, the support, for listening, uh, and to all the guests, you know, who come on and, and make this show possible. So to kick off today's episode, today isn't going to be a comfortable conversation, but it's an important one. We'll be speaking to a woman who reached out to us to share her story of being secretly molested by her own brother and how she continues to carry that secret with her and the struggle of continuing to see her brother as they grow older. So first of all, we have the guests on the line and we want to thank you so much for being on today. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So to start, can you just paint a picture of your relationship with your brother before things took a turn? So what was the age difference? Were you guys close as siblings growing up? So my brother is uh, seven years older than me. Um, before everything happened, I don't really rem like remember too much about that part of my life. Like my earliest memories are basically, it's sad to say, but like are basically like what happened. But um, like with my brother. But uh, yeah, we were... Um, I, I have an older sister, so um, we were all like very close. He would like help us, like like he would he was like our older brother, so he would like be with us all the time. We would like play games. He would like he was super into like Star Wars, so he would always we would always watch it together and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it was it was really comfortable. Like we had a really comfortable relationship, and I really really loved my brother at that time. Like we were really close. I know that for a fact. <laughs> And then I guess at, at what point did, I mean, I guess in hindsight, did you feel like the relationship with your brother started to be inappropriate? Um, I would say when he started hitting puberty. <laughs> um, it, I, it, he started like doing the things he did to me in grade eight and, and nine. So I feel like that's in a lot of young, like, men or like boys I feel like that's a very like strange time for them also but yeah that's when I would say that that's when it, when it started okay yeah that's so that's kind of ending middle school going into high school um do you kind of remember the first instances and and what happened and how you felt so um he was getting into video games and I was really into video games. Like I really, I only liked what he liked because I really liked being around him. So if he liked video games, I like video games. And he was um, showing me like this new game or whatever on his like, whatever device he had at that time. Um, and he had a, he had his room in the basement. So he would, um, we would go down there to like look at the stuff that he had and we would like, he would like show me it for a little bit and then I would remember he just started doing it like we didn't even talk he didn't talk to me or anything about it he just started removing my clothes <laughs> so I would say that's one that's the first time it like happened was when that's the first thing I remember is when he first removed my shirt like the first time and do you remember sort of like being in that situation and did you know that something was off about the situation or did it did he try to make it feel sort of normal um thinking back it's like I f almost feel like my memories don't have like audio do you know what I mean right <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but like I can picture like so much 
things that happened, but I feel like I was so like in my own head, like what is happening, like what's going on, that I didn't really care about what I'm hearing. It was more like, this is really, really crazy, like what's happening? And I didn't, but he probably said something, you know, I, I that's kind of, I feel like would be weird if he just didn't. Um, but I know that he definitely would leave, would, would say like, it's okay, like, it's all good, like, because he never looked scary, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of built-in trust with family members, as we've learned from, you know, a lot of episodes on the show. But seven years is a big gap. Do you remember exactly how old you are at the time when this started? So, I, I was like sev- seven. Oh, no, 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 eight. I was eight. When this, like, seven, eight-ish. Because if, cause he started doing it to me around, like, grade eight in that area. So I would say I was like seven or eight ish. Um, That's super young. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so hard because like, that's the time I'm supposed to remember like my best childhood memories. So like when, when I try to think back at like my family's talking about, Oh, like remember when this happened, it's like, but that was also happening at the same time. So how am I supposed to like think about that when this really bad thing's happening? It's, you know, it's like. And how how often would this happen? Like whenever you guys were hanging out alone, he would take your shirt off? Yes. Well, so he sometimes wouldn't uh, remove my clothes. Um, Sometimes, like I remember one time. Well, to answer your question about how often, I honestly don't. I can't like like pinpoint an amount of like times, but. It did happen often. I would probably say like at least once a a week. But I remember a specific time we were home alone and we were in the living room. And somehow it just like, I just remember he he was like dry humping me. Like like, with our clothes on. And like, I don't know. It's just like, I don't remember how it got to that point. Like, you know, I can never remember. I can't really remember how it gets to that point. Yeah. I can only remember, like, the, the main, like, oh, like, this is happening. Like, I don't remember how he got on top of me or anything, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure it's it's just so complicated, the dynamic, when it's not a stranger. Because this is someone that you're told to love, to care about, someone that's part of your family unit, essentially someone that's on your team. I know you were young. Do you remember at all some of those feelings around um, like maybe wanting to tell someone what he was doing? Or I don't know if there was a fear of him getting in trouble, even though maybe you did sense what he was doing was wrong. Yeah. So I remember a specific time where I was sitting with my older sister. So that my sister's in between me and my brother. And I remember we were sitting alone and I don't remember like how I started thinking about this, but I was like, does he do it to her too? Like, like, you know, like I, I just like thought about it for a quick second and I was a little bit like, this was like a little bit older. Like I, um, but, um, I was like, does he do it to her too? And I really, really wanted to ask her like really, really, really bad, but I didn't like every time that I wanted to tell somebody or something, but I just didn't for some reason. Like I felt like she was also, she's only two years younger than him. So they're very, very, very close in age. So I also thought maybe he chose to do it to me because like I was younger and she would have, you know, like, but yeah, there was definitely times where I wanted to tell her, especially because she, I felt like that's something that she should know. Did you ever end up telling anybody? Um, yeah, so I actually have a boyfriend. He knows. Mm. Um, I, I felt like I had to tell him. Um, because, like, a lot of what happened to me is made me who I am today, you know? So I felt like, you know, like I had to tell him. But um, I also have a friend who knows. But um, I also felt like I told them because they deserved to know in a way. Like, they're choosing to be around me. 
like my family doesn't choose. I don't know. Like they, they chose to be around me. So I, I, I told them, um, but I, I never went in detail. Like I never, ever went in detail. It was just like, hey, this happened to me. It's the reason I am the way I am probably. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. When you say that, like, it's the reason I, you know, I am the way I am. Like, do you notice any sort of, um, you know, long-term ramifications from this experience? Uh, yes. Negative self-talk. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, like, hard on myself. I don't know how, like, I don't really know how that, like, correlates, but I know it probably does somehow. Um, and I'm always, always thinking like, oh, I wonder who I would be like if, if this didn't happen to me Mm. or like what type of, sorry, like what type of relationship would I have with my family if this didn't happen? Yeah. It's so, you know, we're, we're obviously so sorry that this happened to you and that's what's so painful to hear these stories is just how out of control it was out of your own control. Like this is just something that this person in your life chose to do to you. And, you know, especially like you said before, in in the years that are supposed to be some of the best as a child. And it's, you know, it's, it's so heartbreaking to hear that. And, I think, you know, I mentioned this to you before we started recording, but one of the reasons for us to do this episode is, and we've said this on the show, you know, many times before, but this is one of those topics that shocks us to our core of how many emails come in to the show with, with something similar to this. And we've done this topic before, um, you know, where it's certain family members and we've, you know, gone over the idea of like stranger danger versus the person closest to you that, you know, could be the one abusing you. And it's just so hard to know, you know, even now how many people listening are, you know, have gone through something like this or, you know, are going through something like this and, um, you know, maybe have just never told anyone or, or don't know how, um, to even begin, you know, to cope with this. And I guess that's just a long way of saying, um, or asking, you know, as you, as you get older and you mentioned that you told a few people, um, obviously there are the ramifications that, you know, you are feeling, but what are some of the ways that you have kind of begun to process this, comprehend this and, and some steps that you've taken? Um, Kind of just like, I, I guess like coming to the point where okay, like this happened to me, I can't change it. Now I gotta live. I gotta live with it, and like I gotta, I gotta figure out how I can, I can live, I can live with it. Basically, like if 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 that happened to me and this is part of my life, I can't keep blaming other people about it I need to start like saying okay now it's your turn to take action (laughs) like you said like I didn't have control that part of my life well I have control like now so I feel like I'm that's kind of helped me Mm -hmm. kind of getting back with like okay like I can't keep pushing like why did this happen why did this happen I can't believe this happened to me and just say like okay it did happen now now what you know Mm -hmm. have you ever uh thought about doing any sort of therapy? Um, I actually did do counseling, but it wasn't, it wasn't for this. Um, something happened at one of my jobs a couple years ago when my parents were like, yep, we're getting counseling because that seems like something that's, um, traumatic or whatever, even though it wasn't as bad as, uh, other things I've been through. But, um, yeah, so I did do counseling, but I never, I never brought this up. Like, I, I wanted to so many times because I knew it would be good for me. And she was right there. Like, I could have just said, hey, like, this also happened to me. But mm. I did. And I know yeah. that's what I do because, like, I, I still get images of, like, things that happen, like, boom, like, throughout my day. I just, like, picture him, my brother, with his head, like, stuck in my pants. Like, you know, it's like... 
I can't. I need. I know. I need to do therapy. <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, and obviously, we are not experts in this at all. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, we do. Um, you know, from from our understanding, from a lot of conversations, and um, you know, some of our own experiences. You know, the the resources are for sure there. The help is for sure there, and there's definitely nothing wrong with, you know, seeking that out and, you know, talking about it. And, you know, maybe even today is just the start of, um, you kind of sharing this story, uh, with more people. And that's exactly how I looked at it. Like I was getting really nervous and I was like, you know what, like, first of all, this is anonymous. And second of all, like there's, and when you said like you get so many emails about this, it really like made me feel better. (laughs) I'm not like better in a good, like, yeah. No, no, we, we understand. No, I, I, that, that's why, that's why we have these conversations. Like, you know, like we said in the beginning of the show, this is not enjoyable. I don't think for anyone to, to listen to. And, um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean by saying you feel better. It's just, I think understanding that you're not, not alone is, is always helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am curious just, um, I think before we kind of talk about present day a little bit, um, what, how long did this go on for and when did it eventually just come to a stop? So because my childhood is blurry, I, I, I try to think about it through my brother's age. So like if he was in like grade eight, I want to say he stopped, he stopped when he was in the ending of grade 10. So it went on for like, almost three years I would say like or you know around that time um but yeah does that that answer your question um Mm -hmm. yeah that's like like three four ish years that's how that's how long I would say um and I guess you know present day uh you know in your email you had mentioned that like you were thinking about sort of confronting him Oh yeah, yeah. Well, my 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 boyfriend, me and him were talking about it the one day, and he said, you know, like, what if one day you guys go to somewhere public, like a coffee shop or something, and you say like, so just so that he just, you know, he can't like freak out. Just if he would, I don't know if he would, but like, and you could say, hey, like, this happened. Like we both know it happened, and we should talk about it. And I know that hopefully I'll one day I'll be able to do that. <laughs> That's a big, big, big step. And I just, I, I think about it like almost every day, but I, I just don't think it's something that I would do soon. How is your relationship with him now? Like, can you be in the same room with him? Are you guys cordial? Do you speak at all? Um, well, we're, we're cordial. I mean, we've been, we've been, my parents think we, my mom thinks that me and my brother are like the same and like she she loves our relationship she thinks that we're so but like I've tried so hard to like hug him when he's leaving and like kind of put myself like in front of him like talking to him I love talking to him we have the best conversations but for a minute I forget what happened and then I'm back to like what happened and then I just blank out and I get weird and I step back and then he leaves and I didn't even say bye you know it's like and then my mom's like oh what was your problem (laughs) but um he has a weird relationship with my whole family right now he's I don't know it's it's weird um but we're definitely cordial Mm -hmm. what's the biggest I guess apprehension on your end to um you know, having this conversation, just kind of asking him to go to a public place and kind of laying it all out on the table. Um, like, what am I worried about if that was to happen? Yeah, yeah. Or why, yeah, why do you f- feel not ready to do that? Um, probably because of my family. Um, but also my little sister. She loves my brother so much. the fear of how your family's image of him would change if this truth comes out yeah and that's exactly why i never told my 
childhood best friend. Like, we're still best friends today. And she was so close to my family. Like, our families were so close. Her older sister and my brother were, like, best friends. And I only just recently told her. And I said, I don't want this to change your image on him because he's not a bad person. It's just something he chose to do. for. I, and then I just felt so guilty because it's not my place. I feel like it's not my place to tell other people something that I know he regrets, something he did that I know he regrets. But at the same time, like, it happened to me too. But I don't know, it's just hard. Like, I don't want my family, especially my sister, to be like, oh my gosh, like, really, he did that? Like, that would just kill her. I know that. And how do you think, like... You said that you know that he regrets it. Like, how are you sure of that? Honestly, I'm not. I just, um, yeah, honestly, I'm not. Um, I'm, I tend to see the good in people. as also, I'm trying to, like, work on. But um, I, I, right after it happened, like, when, right when it stopped, he went through a very, very, very depressive time, like, I didn't see, he had his room in the basement and we didn't see him around the house for like a full year. Like he was like doing drugs down there. He was like, he looked a mess when he would come up to get a box of crackers and then go back downstairs. Like, and that like hurt me because I remember seeing him not, like do, do that. And I felt like it was like my fault. He was in that place because of like what happened. But I, for some reason, I feel like that was him he went through that because of what he did. I don't, I don't know, but I feel like if he did regret it that much, he would apologize. Well, I know that also, but and you know, it's hard. Like, I don't, I don't know if he regrets it. I don't, but yeah. I hope. Do, you, do you think that he knows how much it has affected you? No. Mm -mm. Um, the, uh, so we were at my sister's for uh, Easter and like last year. And he, um, my sister brought up uh, how someone from a, a past like ch children's event we used to go to, um, the OPP called her and said, hey, like there's a child sexual assault case going on from that time that you were a leader there. We have some questions like, about that, like if you have any, like anything you want to add or whatever, like there's a case going on. So she brought that up and it was so awkward. Like my heart, my, my throat was closing. Cause like they're talking about it around the dinner table and he's sitting like right across from me. And it was so like, and they're just talking about a child, like sexual assault, like whatever, whatever. And I'm just sitting there like, like, and Sorry, I like lost my train of thought. What was your question? No, just I mean, also just like during that interaction, like was there ever ever any like sort of silent acknowledgement that you guys like caught each other's eyes or something that like you knew like it was awkward or um, I, I didn't want to look at him. Right. I did. Because his wife is sitting right beside me. Like, oh that's another thing. Like oh, he has a he's married now. Yeah. Like his whole wife. She comes to everything. Like, they live together. Like, they've been together for four years. They've been together since right after this happened, actually. Like, right when he got out of his depressive mode, he kind of jumped back. And I think she kind of helped him get out of that. And they've been together since then. Mm. Like, she's been around. And it's, and it's like, she's right there. And I just want to say, like, hey, like, you don't even know who he really is. But, like, like you know. Is there any part of you that you know wonders or maybe thinks it's possible that y you weren't the only person that he did this to and you know I would I hate to even say like if it could still be something that happens I mean it's what's so hard to swallow is uh the fact that you were so underaged and you know he was it's high school like everyone makes mistakes and does stupid things in high school but there's for sure, I would say, typically uh, an awareness of, 
you know, right and wrong and underaged and not, and you know, there's, or do you just not even let your mind go there? I mean, like, wait, sorry, what was the question? I, I guess, is there any, do you think that there's any possibility that this is something that he could have done to others or even still is possibly doing to maybe underage children? Yeah. So when I told my best friend, finally, she came to me and was like, Hey, like she wrote, actually she wrote in her notes, something that she wanted to tell me. And she gave it to me face to face. She's like, I can't say this, but I need you to read it. And she's like, and that she basically said that she wants me to contact the police. And she thinks she told her older sister when I wish she didn't, but she did. And she, um, wanted me to contact the police and said you don't know if he did this to anybody else and you don't know if he will do it to his own children you don't you don't know yeah i i know that like i carry that like but there's also the part of me that like thinks like like i don't know why i think this like he's my own brother like i know he wouldn't but like i actually don't know because he did that to me like my own brother wouldn't do that to me you know so i don't know him Mm -hmm. like myself that I know him and he wouldn't do that to anybody else it was only me because you know he was going through a bad time and blah 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 blah. but that's another thing like especially his own children like I don't know he he has children currently oh he doesn't but I'm just saying like what if one day yeah like he goes through time like really whatever and he decides to do it because if he did it once I mean like he can do it again like yeah no absolutely I think that's um a really scary reality, but that's definitely, yeah, that's what comes to mind for me for sure. But like, if you like, uh, he just, I don't think he has the, (laughs) he's going through a lot. Like, I don't, I don't want to like give him like sympathy or whatever, but he is going through a lot and he has a lot of mental health issues that my parents never, ever, ever addressed. And I know he, is going through a lot right now, but I just don't, you know, my head is like, he, he, he wouldn't be able to do that right now. He's not doing anything like that right now, like to another kid or whatever, but I don't know. Like, yeah, no, I mean, that's a very difficult sort of position to be in. And I think ultimately you have to, you know, do what's best for you. Like, Clearly, it sounds like, you know, you're struggling with this day to day. Sorry. Um, So, I mean, I think at a certain point, um, you have to just do what's best for you so that Mm -hmm. you can sort of move on from this um, and not really have to worry about protecting everyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause it's, cause like I said, from, I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, obviously, like th- this is completely up to you and it's your thing to do. I'm just saying like at, at a certain point, like it's heartbreaking to hear, hear all of this and it's, there is a pattern of behavior from, you know, us doing this show for a while, like hearing people who have been wronged by people close to them or family members, there is a, most of the time this notion of, I, I still need to protect this person. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not until, you know, the uh, victim in a situation is like, I have to do what's right for me that, you know, they can actually move on from this. So, um, you know, whenever that is or, or whatever that is in any sort of capacity, I, you know, I hope that you can get to the point where you decide to make a decision for you, whatever that means. And, you know, you are able to, to move on from this because I think, you know, even just talking about it. Um, hopefully, you know, talking to us about it is, you know, therapeutic in a way, Mm -hmm. just so that, you know, people can kind of know and you can kind of let this out because to not really tell anybody or, you know, and not tell the details to anyone and, you know, feel like you're completely alone on this is pretty daunting, um, Mm -hmm. especially over time. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I just hope, I just hope that you can get to a place where, you feel a lot better about this and you can start trying to move on from it instead of you like living your life sort of around it. And every so often you have to run into this wall again. And yeah, and that's another thing that's like, will it truly make me feel better if I do like tell everybody? 
Like, will yeah. I feel like any better? Like, because if I do tell everybody, it still won't take away the fact that it happened. But yeah, like I know people will say like, oh, but you know, like it'll get off your shoulder. Like, but then we have a whole other issue we have to deal with. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, like we're we're not experts. I don't think we can answer that. But I think, regardless, any true road to recovery to understanding trauma that you've been through, I think, I think the fact is it's, it's a long road. I don't think one thing is, is just going to help. I think there's a very long road to go down, but you know, like Joe said, I mean, just having, having spoken to you for 30 minutes, like, first of all, again, we thank you for just the realness of this, just the struggle that you're going through and, and just explaining, you know, what, that feels like, uh, because like we said, unfortunately, a lot of people are in a very similar situation as you, but, you know, really do hope that you don't feel like this is your fault at all. And like Joe said, you know, the, you already have this unbearable weight, like unimaginable weight on you with what happened to you. And then that added layer of wanting to protect this person or wanting to keep the family together, it, just seems like so much and you know we we really do hope that you continue talking about this that you you know can talk to professionals who do know the answers of you know how to how to like start the process of you know truly getting help and um making sure that you don't feel like this is your fault at all because it in no way is it mm mm-hmm. I really thank you guys for like giving me the opportunity because it, it honestly does make me feel better to start to talk to people who have no idea who I am and who my family is. And mm-hmm. I can tell them straight up, like, this is what happened. Like, and they have no, like, oh, really? Like, I didn't know. Like, really? Like, right. Yeah, totally. Really good to kind of just get it out there. And not, and like I said in the email, like, not only do I want to do this for other people to let them know that. I'm going through this too, but so that I know that other people are going through this too, because I honestly, no one that I've told has been able to say, Hey, yeah, like that happened to me too, you know? Right. And uh, honestly, what you just said of being, you know, feeling a little better because you're able to tell us and we don't know who you are or any of that. Um, you know, I, I, at least from my personal experience, like that's why I feel like talking to a therapist is pretty, amazing when you're dealing with stuff like this, uh, because I mean, they don't know who you are. They know nothing. They don't, you know, know anyone involved. And it's good. Even if you're not going to make like serious decisions, at least being able to put it on the table and get another perspective back and have even 1% more understanding of the situation. If, you know, that compounded over the, the course of like months or years, like, once you have a better understanding of it, I think, uh, at least in my personal experience, it, it makes it easier to deal with. Um, and also if you do decide to start making decisions now, it's like based in more understanding than you would have had if you just like held on to it and tried to figure it out yourself. Like it's always helpful to talk to people who don't have a bias or agenda or any, or, you know, not connected to your life because, you know, I'm sure that you're worried about telling certain people. I mean, you kind of like said this before because you're worried about them now judging this mm-hmm. person who they've known their whole life. And you're like, I don't want that either to deal with all of that. I just need to tell somebody. Um, mm-hmm. So if you feel like talking to us made you feel like even slightly better for a temporary amount of time, I think that talking to a therapist is, you know, definitely helpful at least in my experience again mm-hmm. not telling you what to do obviously i have no <laughs> idea <laughs> but that's just better help <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah or that too <laughs> um but yeah um so i mean moving forward do you do you know you know if you are taking any steps towards something or you know are you just kind of in this like place where you're just kind of still dealing with it day to day and eventually going to figure something out? Um, I think honestly, these past couple of weeks, I, for some reason felt like I needed to like, obviously I said like, I'm, I'm a very negative self talker. So I've been trying to work on 
you know, like if I do something even slightly that's like rewarding or, or I did a good job, I'll be like, yeah, good job. Like, that was great. Like I, I, I try to like hype myself up and leave in the small things and tell myself I'm doing good. Even if I feel like I'm doing nothing. Um, I've also been trying to live in the moment, not really in my past or what's going to happen in the future. I'm trying to like take in my day as like, okay, I'll never be able to get this day again. And kind of like every day is a new day. I don't know. I don't want it to sound like, you know, but I've really been trying to get in that mindset because I feel like it will make me feel like I'm not carrying around as much yeah, I mean, you know, as, as cliche and as corny that people would probably interpret that, it, like it, it is really true, like the positive reinforcement and changing the way that you think about and treat yourself has very real life, like, you know, effect, yeah, you know, you truly can't like seek help from anywhere else until you honestly are able to like give yourself what you need and not, not all the time you're able to give yourself the help that you fully need, but at least you're there to support yourself. You know? Exactly. Yeah. That, it's a good point. Cause it's, it's being honest about your situation and yourself. And, you know, I just, you know, to, with what Joe said, like with my own experiences with therapy, um, it's been so great because I really appreciate my therapist early on when I first started calling me out for clearly, like not lying, but it's like just not being fully honest or still worrying about like, oh, how's this person going to perceive me? So let me put a twist on this story or how I tell it. And it was kind of like, okay, this isn't going to work if you're putting up any walls. And I think, um, you know, for you to even just, not that the show is anything close to therapy, but coming on, having not or barely spoken to anyone about this and just going into the, the detail that you did and being so vulnerable about your situation. Um, I, I hope, you know, that you do see that as a positive and I hope that it's a, a step for, you know, many other things to unfold for you. Yeah. And I'm, I really was, that's what I was trying to look at this opportunity as I was like, you know what, if I can do this, like, it'll be like, kind of like the next, okay, what's the next thing? I, I did this now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, we, we are cheering you on seriously. And, um, you know, we, we can't thank you enough for everything that you just shared. And, um, we are really, really, truly pulling for you. And like Joe said, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear. And, you know, we really do want the best for you and, you know, for you to keep moving in, in the right direction with everything to just feel the best and, and be the best version of yourself. Thank you. I really, I really appreciate your guys' words. And honestly, you guys just listening to me like you did. It, I, I, I wanted to go more in detail about things, but I, I, I'm glad what I, what I said. And I'm really thankful that you guys are here. Thanks. Of course. And definitely, you know, reach out whenever you want, if you want. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I think that this will be helpful uh, for people who may be going through a similar situation to feel like they're not alone. And, you know, everyone who we talk to is usually in a different place in their journey to either recovery or, you know, after recovery or anything like, so, you know, we appreciate anyone who comes on and kind of like shares all that. So thank you. And I just want to say like, truly everyone, you got to tell yourself that you got this every so often. <laughs> you really do. You just got to say like, you know what? You got this. Just keep going. Hell yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We're huge advocates for therapy on this show. It's a topic that comes up often, and it's something that a lot of our guests have found to be immensely helpful in their lives and their journeys to recovery from trauma, experiences, challenges, 
For me personally, therapy has been amazing in helping me build confidence and coping skills to navigate issues that I face. I recently became a first time father just a few months ago. So it's been really helpful uh, to work with my therapist to help understand how to face this new territory, these new challenges, and um, think about the person that I want to be personally, you know, as, as a father, as I kind of go through these new phases of life. And if you're feeling stuck in life, you're not alone. Therapy could be a great option for you. And that's why we're excited to talk about BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you could easily switch to a new therapist anytime it truly could not be simpler. There's no waiting rooms. There's no traffic. There's no endless searching for the right therapist. So learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash OPL. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash OPL and get that 10% off your first month. Betterhelp.com slash OPL. This holiday season, I want to give a gift to my loved ones that makes them feel special and unique, just like the relationship we share. That's why I'm giving everyone I care about StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It's a thoughtful and meaningful gift that helps you connect with those who matter most. I did this last year for my mom, and the way it works is every week, StoryWorth emails your relative or friend, whoever you get the gift for, a thought-provoking question of your choice. So you can choose from a pool of possible questions. You can choose the ones that you want sent to the person that you got this for. And each unique prompt asks questions that you probably never thought to ask, like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or if you could see into the future, what would you want to find out? And then after one year, StoryWorth will compile all your loved one's stories, essentially the answers to these prompts, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. Like literally a book, like an actual physical book that you can hold and that you can read will then be sent to them. So really cool. Like for my mom, it was a cool experience because we kind of all got to sit down and read through her stories. And I remember... Uh, for me, I was finding out so many things about her childhood that just made me realize like, whoa, she's like me in a lot of ways when she was young. And that was cool to kind of like humanize a parent in that way. And I'm doing the same thing this year with my dad, with my brother, my grandpa. So really, really cool gift. Um, super thoughtful as well. And reading these weekly stories will help you connect with your loved ones, no matter how near or far apart you are. So with StoryWorth, I'm giving those I love most a thoughtful, personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. So head over to StoryWorth dot com slash OPL and save $10 on your first purchase. That's story worth S T O R Y W O R T H story dot com slash OPL and save $10 on your first purchase. That was one of the more, that was one of the toughest conversations I think we've ever had on this show. Um, and it's not even just because of the traumatic thing that happened, but just the stage and where she is in dealing with all of this. And, you know, I, I feel like it, personally, I know what it feels like to be going through something and feel like, oh, my God, I can't talk to anyone or like I shouldn't talk to anyone because I'm going to affect people's, you know, opinions on this or that. Blah, blah, blah. And you just like back yourself into a corner and then it's just you and then it feels completely overwhelming. Um, and I feel for her because the things that I'm talking about are not nearly as uh, heavy or traumatic as, you know, what she's talking about. So I can't even imagine what she could be going through. Um, and I really do hope that anyone who's listening to this um, knows that talking to someone, um, you know, I, 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 can, I get how it's hard to even talk to your best friends sometimes or the people who are closest to you. And it feels like I can't rely on these people. So it's, talking to a therapist, I think, is really super helpful. As soon as I started doing that, I could see it like night and day to have someone who doesn't know your life, doesn't know the people in your life, and you know won't judge them and is professional. That can be so helpful um, just to help you 
organize your thoughts so that you can start making decisions on your own. You don't have to look to these people for answers, but they can help you organize your life so that you can better understand it and, and do that. So I, I just wanted to say that, um, and I'm, we try not to give like advice on this show because we're not professionals or anything, um, but it's, it's hard to hear that um, and, and to not just, just say it. So I, I just wanted to say that also and just reiterate it at the end of the show that like if you are going through something and you feel like you can't talk to people, well, that's normal. And uh, you can talk to a, a professional and they will, I, I think it's, it's very helpful. I mean, it's, you know, case by case and therapist by therapist, but I would highly suggest that. But yeah, that was a very difficult conversation to hear. And I mean, we obviously wish her the, the best. Yeah, no, we, we really do. And um, yeah, I think it's as simple as that. Like if, if there is advice that we do feel comfortable giving on this show, I think it's two things. It's seek professional help if you feel like you need to. Don't be afraid of that. And also just remember to ask your loved ones how they are. Check in with the people that you care about. I think, you know, those two things uh, can go a long, long, long way. Yeah. And honestly, understanding, understanding and just talking about it like means a lot to know that you're not alone and to know that, oh no, this is, this is something that people go through. This is a normal reaction I'm having because, you know, I don't, what she said about she's, she negatively thinks, talks about herself or the way that she treats and beats herself up a lot. That can be a vicious circle also. Something happens to you and then you start blaming yourself and then you act a certain way because you're in a bad mood and then you start thinking like, oh, I'm treating this and you're just blaming yourself for everything. So I think, you know, like I said, talking to a, a professional really helps with all of that. And, and I've loved what she said at the end of that because it's so true as like, you know, Disney and corny, quote unquote, as it may sound, it's so true that you have to really look inward and like love the person that you are and really give yourself a chance to come out of something dark. Um, before you can even make those moves, you have to like accept that, accept that you need help and that accept that like, okay, I'm going to start dealing with this now, you know, and like make that decision. And then you can just move forward with that. And it's a very difficult thing to do. And it's, it's a different timeline for everyone, which is totally fine. But as long as you're just moving forward every day, um, you're going somewhere and it's going in the right direction as well. So, uh, we definitely wish her the best. And um, yeah, for anyone out there who would like to be a guest on our show, uh, hit us up. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. We appreciate all you guys who sent us emails. Yeah, we are actively booking new episodes. So we want to hear from you. Reach out, hit that email that Joe just said. And that's a wrap on another season. So thank you guys for listening, following, supporting, commenting. Um, you know, loving, hating, whatever it is, you know, we thank you and how active that, you know, how active you guys are. So we're going to take a break for, I think it's six weeks. We should probably know this something around there while we get new episodes. Um, but you know, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow the Instagram, TikTok at OPL podcast. We'll be posting updates of exactly when we're coming back, a bunch of clips from this season, wrap up videos, all that. So we'll, we will be active there and, uh, We'll see you soon for the next season. See you guys.